the Arabs claim that Israel has no legitimacy, that the Arabs have been occupying the Middle East for millennia, and that the Jews came only around the turn of the, of the middle of the 18th century and settled the country as colonizers and took hold of the land by force later on after the UN partitioned Palestine. This is of course based on lies and on a total distortion of history. The Jews have occupied the country as we all know since biblical times. The Arabs were the ones that conquered the land in the 6th century. The Arabs are the ones that destroyed the population of the land and as a matter of fact destroyed the land. They turned the land that was a land of milk and honey a rich prize that the Romans fought in order to conquer because it was so wealthy. They turned it into what Mark Twain, when he visited Palestine in 1860, called a prince of desolation. You all have to read Mark Twain's book, Innocence Abroad, his visit to the Holy Land, and read there how the country was not only desolate but empty. There were no Arabs living there because it was impossible to live there. The place was a desert, full of swamps, full of malaria, and no one was interested in occupying it. Now, what the Arabs also distort is the fact that the last time international, an international body, a judicial international body, decided on the disposition of the land, it was after the First World War. Remember that before that, all the Middle East, all of North Africa, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Syria, were all Turkish provinces. They were ruled by the Turks for almost 600 years. There was not one sovereign Arab state. The Arabs were an ethnic group within the, within the Turkish Empire, part of the Muslim culture, but nevertheless an, eth an ethnic group. When the war, the First World War was over, and the peace conference took place in France, the Arabs agreed to a bargain, and the bargain was that they would get 99% of the lands of the Turks, North Africa, Egypt, parts of Syria, Iraq, etc., on condition that they give up their rights to 2% of the land. This 2% of the land was what is today Israel, the West Bank, and Jordan. It was all part of the British mandate over Palestine that was granted to the British by the League of Nations because the British undertook to establish there a Jewish national home. This was a bargain struck between the Arabs under the Sharif Hussein of Mecca and the British and the Americans, and as a matter of fact, the Sharif Hussein wrote a letter to Weizmann and wrote a letter to Judge Oppenheimer from the US certifying this bargain. Now the Arabs have taken the 99% of the land and now they want the little 1% that was left as well. They want to break the bargain and just occupy everything because Believers in Islam believe that the world is divided into two, into the house of Islam and the house of war. And Islam has to conquer the house of war where the infidels, namely Jews and Christians, live. Unfortunately, a lot of people fall for this false argument of the Arabs as if they had land in Palestine, as if Palestine was ever an Arab independent state and therefore they blame the Israelis or the Jews for colonizing this area and for occupying it. This is again an outright lie. Jews came there by law, by a bargain that was struck for which the Arabs were paid a full price of 99% of the lands, all of North Africa, Egypt, and later on even, the little piece of land that was given was again divided into two by the British, who tore a piece of Palestine, the majority of it, 70%, and gave it to the Emir Abdallah as his kingdom of Jordan. And now the little piece that was left, they want to take away from us as well. What year did those uh, uh, agreements or... Uh, 1922. 1920 was San Remo? Right. 20 to 22. Right. San Remo agreements. And then the British in 22 
split off? Right, because they promised Damascus in Syria to, the, to Abdallah. And then when the French kicked him out, they had to compensate him. So they decided they'll take part of the British mandate over Palestine and give it to Abdallah, reneging on their obligation. So what would you say to those who believe that, that uh, uh, after World War II, Eastern European Jews came and took the Palestinians' land? Well, we know that history. My great-grandfather came to Palestine in 1860. From where? From London. In 1860, that's correct. 1870, I'm sorry. 1870, from, from London. And was he the first Jew here? No, no, no. There were Jewish, the Jews were a majority then in Jerusalem. Already then, yes. Because preceding that, there were, in the 17th century already, Jews that came, the Hasidic movement. But there was always a Jewish occupation of the land. Always. People that lived there. They were always, you know, oppressed, killed, but it never ceased. Always meaning for centuries? Yes. There were Jews that never left for exile. Never. Small, small communities, but they were there. And then in Pekin, in the Galilee, and other places. And then through legal, through, through the, the British right, mandate? Right, right. The British mandate, just like it recognized the rights of the Arabs to the Turkish lands in which they were a majority, they decided they, not the British, the League of Nations, which was the, you know, the precursor of the U United Nations, decided that the Jews had a much stronger and preceding case for this 1% of the land called Palestine. And then how was the State of Israel established? The State of, uh, of Israel was established after the partition agreement of 1948, which took the little sliver that was left and divided it between Jews and Arabs, since Arabs were also living on the land. That, that was not a decision of the UN, it was a recommendation. And it was hinging on the two parties accepting it. Once the Arabs <coughs> refused to accept this, this the division was null and void. So what you have are not Arab lands, those are disputed lands, it's best. Those are lands that by law, the last international decision about those lands was that those lands should belong to the Jewish national home. Which not to all of what is called now the West Bank and Israel and Transjordan. All of it. Even Transjordan? Yes. That was part of the British mandate designed to be a national home for the Jews. As I said, it was a 1% of the land, less than 1% that was given to the Jews in recognition of the fact that the Arabs got 99% of the land. And so Israel, when it declared its independence, Occupied only, as I would say, about 30% of the land that was given them under the mandate. But was attacked by five Arab armies? And was attacked by seven Arab armies that wanted to, you know, to throw them into the sea, to kill them. And by the victory, Israel but, was, was able to establish its independence? Right, and, and acquire a bit more territory, and then in 67 it repeated itself again, when the Arabs wanted to attack and destroy the state of Israel, and Israel won, you know, the battle, and acquired the West Bank and Gaza. Which have never been... Never been a Palestinian state ever. The, if the Arabs wanted to have a Palestinian state, they could have. Instead, they gave it to Jordan and to Egypt. They never allowed, the Arabs never allowed the Palestinian to establish a Palestinian state. Because nobody, there was no such thing as a Palestinian nation in those days. That's a new invention. At the time, all the Palestinians living here were considered southern Syrian. And so do Jews have uh, equal rights to, to live uh, equal? on the West Bank of the I think, I think I think better rights. It was uh, the last international dispensation of this land was that it was meant for a Jewish national home. And so now with the, with, with the, uh, the, the, the towns and communities on, on the West Bank? There are only 3% of the West Bank. I don't know what the big fuss is about. And I don't know how anybody believes that we can make peace with an Arab state that does not allow Jews to live in its area. Does Israel allow Arabs to live in Israel? Of course. 20% Israel, of, Is, of Israelis are Muslims. And who live with equal rights? Absolutely. 
And Absolutely. so if 20% of Israel, one out of five Israelis is, is an Arab or a Muslim, right. then shouldn't a few hundred thousand Jews I would think so. Them? Would you ever, would any American accept a condition saying that Canada would say, we don't allow any Americans to settle in Canada? I mean, would anybody accept something like that? Why should the Arabs be allowed to demand that no Jews should live in what is what they claim is their territory? It's not really theirs. But the, but even the nerve to to demand such a demand, people take it for granted, you know. Or do Arabs live safely in Israel? What? Do Arabs are, are Arabs safe to live in Israel? Yes. Of course. And how safe is it for the, for the Jews to live? Uh, well, you know how safe. I mean, if uh, if they can get their hands on it, they'll kill him. On the highway. Everywhere, everywhere. Oh, well, everywhere. And so because they are incited for twenty years, they've been subjected to horrendous anti-Jewish propaganda. A brainwashing. A brainwashing with money is given by Europe and America that supports the Palestinian Authority and its machine of lies. Palestinian television, Palestinian radio is full with this. Horrendous propaganda, anti-Jewish propaganda. And so, if the population is so brainwashed already, how could a peaceful, neighborly, uh, 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 on both on uh, uh, two sides of one fence? It's just really a small fence. Right, tiny place. Israel, so, at uh, its narrowest space, is about five miles wide. Are the Palestinians uh, merely looking to live within their own communities with their own sovereignty? Uh, not the Palestinian leadership, I don't know about the Palestinian people, but certainly not the Palestinian. They make no bones that the uh, aim finally is to replace Israel. You mean conquer Israel? Yes, destroy Israel, conquer it. I mean, they, they've they acted on it, haven't they? And so if they, were to, if they were to conquer it, would Jews be safe to live here anymore? What Jews? There wouldn't be Jews to be safe. They would kill everybody, or, or at best send them away. As they say, they should go back to where they came from. And so what do you encourage the West to do now? I think that first we need patience. It took a long time to establish peace in a civilized Europe. It will take time to establish peace in the Middle East. Meanwhile, Israel has to remain strong so that it's not destroyed. And eventually, I think, the Arabs, being more and more rational, will accept Israel. I think. But it will take time.